right, this is the really super fast abbreviated version of what I've done before, twice now, without audio, uh, and one time without picture, but with audio. So uh, here we go. First off, we've got the Bit Phoenix Prodigy in red. The reason why we picked red is because Asus is our partner this year, uh, one of our tier one sponsors, and they are uh, all about ROG, and ROG is red and black, so we decided to build a red and black system with some upgrades. We're gonna do a mesh front panel here to cool it down just a little bit more, and we're gonna add a 230 millimeter fan to the front of this, this is LED. So with the mesh front panel and the LED, you can see that, hey, you know what? This is gonna look pretty sweet. Next up, this morning, we just did an unboxing video of this unreleased Z87i Deluxe motherboard. This is mini ITX, so it's perfect for a LAN party rig, a smaller rig. This has a full-size PCI Express 3.0 slot, and it will work with all the high-end GPUs from the 6 series, the 7 series, the Titan, the GTX 690, no problemo. Two slots for memory, and a full-size VRM if you want to overclock it. Which brings us to our CPU. What we thought is that because the LAN party rig is gonna be beaten up a lot, it's probably going to be, you no. Know, for some people it's a secondary rig, but it's all about having a good value system that you can overclock specifically for gaming, not for rendering or work or anything like that. We decided to pick a Core i5 4670K Haswell CPU. Now this CPU is about $100 less than the 4770K, but uh, we think that with that $100 saved and with a board like this, you should be able to hit some clock speeds that are close to, if not better than, the 4770K in some respects. Uh, but most importantly, you save money. For flash and SSD, or sorry, memory and SSD, SSD, we're going with the SP900 uh, ADATA 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, this uh, SSD has some specs that are pretty impressive. I mean, we are talking about 550 megabytes per second read and 530 megabytes per second write, which is pretty standard for most Sandforce-based controller SSDs. But the size we thought was important, it's 256 gigabytes, so that should be enough for most of your tournament games, uh, extra games that you want to play, some extra content, and of course, all the programs and the OS to fit on here without adding a second platter-based drive that might add weight to your system, okay? And for memory, we've picked out some low-profile memory modules. These are the XPG ADATA low-profile memory modules that run at 2133 megahertz. And this is a 16 gigabyte kit. So we have all the memory that we need to run Twitter, Facebook, to catch up with those contests that we're gonna be running all weekend long at Vancouver. A lot of the sponsors do, do, are doing their own thing as well too. So this will be great for that, keeping those browser windows open and alt-tabbing between your game and whatever else you're doing. And moving along, uh, we talked about the 4670K. Let's talk about our power and cooling here. Be Quiet is actually going to be, no, I'm not telling you guys to be quiet. This is the company, Be Quiet. This is what they're called. And they're actually, uh, actually a German company. They are the number one power supply maker in that country. And they do stuff that looks like this. This is their Dark Power Pro 10, 650 watt power supply. It's 80 plus gold. But this thing is built so nicely. Like, I've seen a lot of power supplies out there. Some of them are nice, but this is really well built. Um, it is a completely modular power supply with the exception of the 24 pin right here. Uh, it's really well laid out. A couple of things that I really liked about the power supply is the fact that, let's just say that you're building a single SSD system. It actually has a single SATA connector um, cord that you can use for either your optical drive, which is a single, or a single SSD. Um, so they give you, instead of a whole chain full of, uh, of, of SATA connectors, which don't cable manage very well, they give you a, a few of those in the box here, which is really nice. Uh, they've done everything they can to minimize noise. And they even have this really nice cage right here that, that is your fan guard versus some of the more generic ones here. This is really classy. Inside, it's using the uh, Silent Wings fan here, which is a design that's very low noise and high performance. And the other thing that they've done to increase the, uh, or sorry, decrease noise is to rubberize the mounting points. Like there's a rubber grommet around here. There's also another one on the end here. So no matter which way you mount it up or down, it's going to isolate vibration. So really nice power supply. Unboxing video, I have done one. It's gonna be uploading a little bit later on tonight. It's, it's like two gigabytes. So, uh, 
stay tuned for that. It's probably going to show up in the morning. And of course, we've got the Dark Rock 2. This is a the little brother to the Dark Rock Pro, which is double the size of this. But because we wanted lightweight, a little bit overclocking performance, and the ability for this to fit on this motherboard, we picked the smaller brother. Uh, it still has 180 watts of uh, this heat dissipation, so it's no slouch. Uh, looks something like this. Black nickel plated on all of the uh, fins and everything like that. But one thing I'll tell you right off the bat is that when you feel the the fins on some of the 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 you know like some of the coolers out there they're really flexy like when you touch them they actually bend these ones are really solid like when you when you put your fingers in there and you try to you know give it a a bend it doesn't bend like this is really well built but still lightweight and the other thing they've done is on some of the um heat pipe coolers out there they don't cap off the ends here and make them look nice they basically just pinch them this is capped off really nice and they have the silent wings cooler um, fan right here which is really quiet and also very high performance and this is going inside your system uh, this will fit just barely on our motherboard here so and it will also clear the memory so you can see that it's it's just big enough that it'll it'll still give you performance but it'll also not too big that it won't do the job for us right here okay so that's our parts selection oh um one more thing uh Video card, we have GTX 770s coming for both of our demo systems in the Gamers Lounge. Um, this one's just for show, this is a GTX 570 right here, but I just wanted to bring this out to show you the length and everything. Uh, it's, it will fit in this case here, no problem. In fact, we've done a build of the Prodigy with a GTX 690 inside and it fit no problem. Uh, that's our previous Ultimate LAN party system, but we're moving to a GTX 770 for it this time around for both systems, all right? So, now the front mesh panel here is actually not a bad piece of equipment. It's really well built. It's painted on the sides here to match the color, although it's not an exact match. It's red-ish rather than red. Uh, but for extra cooling performance, especially in the summertime where you need to drag more air through your system, this will work. Uh, the mesh is actually fairly dense and there's actually another piece of fabric back here that'll keep the dust from coming all the way through. If you need to clean it, it looks like all you need to do is basically, if you really want, you could actually wash this because there's nothing on here that would rust and that would do the trick. Just uh, just don't put it in your wa uh, washing, uh, sorry, your dishwasher because it'll probably melt. And then the fan over here. Two hundred thirty millimeter in size. Uh, if you have one of uh, Bit Phoenix's uh, little fan or slash LED controllers here, you can actually plug this into it, I believe, and that will allow you to turn on and off the LED. But once we plug this in, the LED will actually be on all the time. So if you want that uh, option, I think that they do sell that part. I'm just not sure uh, how much it costs or anything like that. But this is going inside our system. Now, if you've never seen a BitPhoenix Prodigy before, uh, you should definitely check out the build video that we did with the white BitPhoenix Prodigy. Uh, we put in a lot of high-end components at that time, like the GTX 690, 3770K, uh, Ivy Bridge. Uh, we even used a brand new at the time, um, what was it, a uh, Z77 uh, Stinger motherboard from EVGA. Um, that board, oops. That board is actually a good board. It just had some BIOS support issues. So we weren't able to get it to work with the memory modules. They were higher speed. Um, it, was, it was kind of finicky. Some people have gotten it to work, but we weren't able to do much with it, unfortunately. Uh, but it was a really nice red and black board. Now, one thing I have noticed over the last uh, few months is that since since we built that white bit Phoenix Prodigy, um, the the Prodigy itself wasn't actually uh, how should I say this nicely? Um, I, the sample that I got wasn't very well built. It could have been handled wrong. I don't know, but it felt really loose. However, this case, 
This one right here is actually very tight. I mean, the fit and finish is actually really fantastic. So if you're picking up a Prodigy today, uh, I'm really impressed with it now. Uh, before, I wasn't so much because uh, it, it just didn't feel right, but it might have been just the one I got. But uh, I have no qualms about recommending the Bit Phoenix Prodigy now because the fit and finish is fantastic now. Okay, so we'll need the other side off as well too if we're gonna reach that front panel and pull off the fan that's inside. Now, one thing I can show you here, if you guys didn't catch the other video, is that you can put two SSDs here, and if you're creative, you can put a third one here and screw it down somehow. Uh, what this allows you to do is have a, a bit of a measure of security, because if you've locked all your SSDs on the door here, then you can't really see them here, right? And since you've got them in the door, you can actually pull out all the hard drive cages, including the optical bay, and have, um, have less weight in your system, which is always a good thing if you have to carry it. And what that will also do is it'll open up this area right here for additional airflow. Uh, the Bifinis Prodigy is also really good for water cooling as well too. You can do 240 millimeter radiators in the front and the top. Uh, and you know, if you want to do a, a, uh, a custom one, you can actually put your, uh, your reservoir and your pump at the bottom as well too. So lots of versatility inside the Prodigy. So the uh, front panel snaps off pretty easily, like so. And that also reveals where the fan placement is. Now, right now there is a single 120 millimeter fan, so we're gonna pull that out. We're also gonna take out the drive cages, which are really easy to pull out, like so. Pulling out the middle one allows you to run a longer graphics card, as you can see right here. But if you left this in, you could put another three and a half, three, three and a half inch, or three two and a half inch drives because these cradles come out and there's holes in the middle there so you can put those in the bottom one also comes out too but you have to unscrew it from the bottom here since we're going to be using a single ssd i would probably recommend pulling it out anyway so i'm going to go ahead and do that so you can see the screws down here and there's a total of six screws that you need to pull off to get the cage off. So we'll do that as quickly as we can. Now, as far as pulling the drive bays out for any other reason, I would probably pull them out anyway if I was building the system just to give me a little bit more space to work with and then probably put the drive bays back in afterwards. Uh, this case is actually available this week. I think NCIX is having a sale. They're, they're like $59 or something like that. And if you show up at the NCIX warehouse sale, they've got a bunch of refurbished ones. Uh, in their warehouse sale. And if they were selling for 79 bucks, then half price would be like 40 bucks or something like that. So you can get yourself a really good deal on a really landworthy case pretty quickly. In fact, what I'm thinking of doing is uh, for PAX Prime in Seattle, uh, because we're gonna be driving down to cover that event, what I'll probably do is end up uh, building a video editing system in one of these prodigies. It's not the smallest case in the world, but it does have room for hard drives, and that's why I like it. And that'll allow me to run a, uh, a pretty cool video editing system. Oops, that was just a drive cage. Inside one of these, and I can carry it. It's easy to carry, and then we can just run it, run it off uh, a monitor and have it in our hotel room for dumping footage. Okay, so that's the uh, drive cage, the second one. All right, and there's six screws we'll put aside so that we don't lose them. So now it's easy to take out the uh, the 120 millimeter fan. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it looks like because the, uh, you know, I think the Spectre fan does come with screws. Let me just have a double check here. Yep, they uh, do come with screws. So if you don't want to reuse the ones that are already on this fan here, you don't have to. But, you know, I tend to leave my screws alone inside their uh, fan packagings if I have them uh, to keep just in case, right? So there we go, out with the old. In with the new, and because um, one of the things that you're going to want to do with small form factor builds is you're going to want to check out, okay, where are my fan headers on the motherboard? Where should I point this so that I can not only tidy this up, but uh, 
you know, make sure that I have enough slack to get to the motherboard. Well, the fan expert headers on this motherboard are right here. They're in the back. So I'm going to need to get from here to there. So if I just kind of place the motherboard right there for now, just to kind of test fit it. And I want this to neatly route all the way through here. And because I'm doing that with it, line up the holes. I think the left hand corner, this bottom corner right here, my right, I, my left I guess, this will be a good spot for the power cable to go through. And there's a hole right in the bottom here that I can slide it up for cable management. So when you're building a system, always think about little things like that because in that way you'll have to pull fans apart or pull parts of things apart just to get cable management correct. And that'll save you time as well too. So we're gonna get this fan screwed in here. And the fan goes in really easily. So there, it's, it's almost completely lined up. And voila, our fan is installed. And now we can just pop this straight on. So if you guys can just kind of visualize for a second, when this thing is completely lit up, it's going to show right through the front here, all right? One of the things that we learned from our Prodigy build from before is that the motherboard should go in with all the components attached to it, because uh, if you need to mount them in here, it's going to be very difficult. So let's, uh, let's look at that. And we also need to consider uh, the power supply. Now, Jackie mentioned that there are, from BitPhoenix mentioned that there are specific power supplies that will fit in this chassis. And we might have picked one that might not fit. So let's just do a quick test on that just to make sure that we're not uh, messing, uh, screwing ourselves over on that. So here's the 650 watt power supply. And that's going in. Actually, you know what? One of the things on the Prodigy is the fact that there is this plate that pushes the power supply into the case. Now if you are running a slightly longer power supply and you don't have the cash to buy a shorter one, one of the tricks that I was told uh, by Jackie was that you could run motherboard standoffs between here and here and this will actually extend the back plate out with enough room for you to fit any length of power supply. But you know, it's kind of sketchy. But let's see if we can do it without that. So with the uh, grill facing down, yep, that's kind of what I thought. Uh, this power supply will be just a little bit too long for our build, just slightly. So you can see here, it, it sticks out too far. Okay, so this guy here is 180 millimeters. So the size that you need is 160. So as long as it's 160 or even a bit shorter, you should be good to go. If you want something that's high quality that will fit, uh, although I think the Be Quiet also makes one that's shorter, uh, I'll double check with the rep, um, then Silverstone would definitely be my next choice for this build. Or uh, what we did with the other build is we used a NZXT uh, 650 or 750 watt Hale 82, Hale 82 that actually fit. Their new Hale 90s do not, their V2s do not, and their V1s didn't either because we actually had a white power supply that we wanted to put in the white um, that Phoenix Prodigy and it didn't work. So something to keep in mind. You know, a couple of trains of thought when it comes to spreading, you know, like thermal goop or thermal paste or whatever you want to call it. The stuff that makes the heat transfer happen between your CPU and your heat sink. Um, I'm more of a dabber. I'll put a grain, uh, uh, a dab about the size of a grain of rice in the middle of the CPU and I'll use the CPU heat sink to work it in. Some people like to do the credit card spread and just get it all even and everything. I think they're equally as good um, because over time that 
that paste is going to come out anyway and if you've done the proper twisting on it it's going to spread itself anyhow so it's going to get all over the surface and it should provide you know like more or less the same performance between the two i think that there might be a degree of difference if you really tested it but it's not really worth the hassle especially if you since you get the stuff all over your fingers it's quite a, it and, and it doesn't come off um, so I, I would rather do it the lazy way and spend more time gaming <laughs> now this is a retail 47 4670k and uh and now i have a brand new in box uh cpu cooler you see those a lot on ebay where they're selling a brand new 990x uh extreme cpu cooler and box only uh i don't get that <laughs> no one wants to stock cooler unless it's a emergency So if you're not aware, um, the new socket is LGA1150 on the new Haswell platform. And it is different enough that you will not be able to drop a uh, IV Bridge chip into this or a Haswell chip into an IV Bridge socket, unfortunately. However, the CPU coolers do fit. So if you have an LGA1155 CPU cooler, it will work on the same socket, no problem. So we'll pop in the uh, chip here. And we will line it up with the arrow, which should be right over here somewhere. And nice thing about Intel CPUs is that they are keyed. So we can actually see the notches down here and here and down here. So we know that it only goes in one way, like so. Boom. And it's in. Now we're going to uh, put the mounting bracket for the... Uh, Nox yeah, sorry, not Noctua, uh, Be Quiet, CPU cooler. Ooh, I'm bad. <laughs> they both make great products, okay? Now the Be Quiet cooler comes with a base plate, which is really sturdy. Uh, one of the things that helps a uh, motherboard stay in one, one piece when you're applying uh, pressure with the, um, the retention me mechanism is a good solid base plate, so this one has it. Uh, also comes with some CPU paste and the base plate itself is actually it's one of the thicker ones that I've seen uh, there's no cutouts in it it doesn't flex uh, very much but there is an indentation here to keep it from contacting any of the uh, base um, motherboard uh, surface mount components and it's also coated with this plastic there so that it doesn't short out anything which is very important obviously where is the best place to hold your motherboard while installing the heatsink? Um, I think it kind of depends. This is a small board, so it's pretty easy. Uh, and what you would probably want to do is drop this on top, whichever way it goes, and then flip it over with the whole thing over, kind of like baking a, a cake, I guess, uh, one of those layer cakes. Uh, and um, that should do the trick. Uh, for larger motherboards, that should still work. And then that way you can get um, get contact with the uh, with the screws on on the other side because this one will mount will need to be screwed in from the bottom. But you also need to make sure that everything's set up properly. So you might have to flip it back over. Uh, just really depends on the mechanism, I guess. Now the Be Quiet series of coolers work all the way up to LGA 2011 and LGA 1150 with the LGA 1155 mounting mechanism, so it's no problem. You can retrofit uh, Haswell, Ivy Bridge, and uh, even Sandy Bridge CPU coolers, no problem, because 1155 and 1150 uh, cooling mechanisms, cooling coolers are compatible. That includes um, water cooling systems as well too, so you should have no problem there as well too. And also some of the custom blocks that some of you guys are using out there for uh, high-end water cooling, that shouldn't be an issue either. The most tedious part is getting your cooler set up. Although one of the really great um, coolers out there right now uh, that we actually looked at for a mini ITX build that we did a while ago, um, the, the LH9 
I. Um, that cooler is completely assembled right out of the box. It uses what's called a secure firm two uh, mechanism from Noctua. And all you need to do is basically flip, flip your board. Uh, with, once you install the thermal paste, you flip your board on top of the cooler and then you uh, install these, uh, these nuts on the bottom and you just screw it down, that's it. That was probably the fastest installation I'd ever done. Um, I'd be curious to see if they've done that with their other coolers, but that mechanism was fantastic. Uh, I talk a little bit more about it in a review or slash article that I did with some of their 80 millimeter PWM fans. Uh, just look for Noctua um, Mini ITX and you should be able to find that, that article on the website at futurelooks.com. All right, so that's done. So the last piece of the puzzle is there's these little knobby things here that they want me to install to keep the, uh, keep the screws from falling back into the back of the motherboard on, off the other side. So I'll do that. These little circles, they look like circles, but they're plastic or rubber, plastic. And that also lines up the screws. Okay, so there we go. So now all I, I would need to do is basically install the heatsink paste and they do include some in the box, uh, but they don't include very much. As you can see, they've given you pretty much a uh, pretty much a two or three application, depending on how good you are with squeezing it out. So I'm just gonna put just a little bit here. Okay. Ooh, stuff wants to keep squirting. Uh, so yeah, but a grain of rice is what I would recommend. And because we're throwing this down on top here, there's a couple things that we're probably going to want to keep an eye on. And that's the fact that when we install this finally, when we get the screws down here and screwed in, uh, you'll notice that there's very little clearance between the cooler itself and the, the RAM modules. So we'll probably want to put our memory down right now. So there's one module and then there's the second one right here. Okay, so those are installed. And now we shouldn't have any issues with installing uh, the cooler itself. Uh, one thing to note though is that because there's just very little room down here, you'll notice that there are uh, fan headers down here. And those might be hard to get to. So depending on how you want your fans controlled on your mini ITX build, uh, I might want to recommend that you put some fan, uh, fan extenders on here, like fan extensions. Then that way when you put everything down, you're not going to run into an issue with trying to get back in here, having to pull off the, uh, the cooler. So I'm gonna grab a few of those and pre-install those just in case I want to use the motherboard to control uh, the fans and you will want to do that because the ASUS boys come with Fan Expert 2 uh, which is the new software that allows you to completely control uh, all the fans on your system. Uh, this, this particular board actually has four fan headers including one for the CPU so it's, it's quite nice uh, because then that way you don't need to install a external fan, uh, fan bus or a fan controller. Okay guys so these things here are called three pin fan extensions. Um, the ones on the motherboard are actually PWM capable. Uh, so these will work and you can still control the fans. You just won't have that temperature sensor on there because these are not four pin. So if you have four pin um, fans on the other end, you're gonna need four pin versions of these, but we'll stick with these. These should work just fine. And for that matter, even the, uh, the headers on the motherboard itself, the, 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 the actual, um, sorry, what am I talking about here? Bleh. It's too hot. Uh, the fans in the case itself, there's two fans in the case. We've got 230 in the front and a 120 in the rear and both fans, they use three pin. So there's no problem with us using three pin extensions, even though the headers on the motherboard are, are four pin. 
remember when I was looking at the board and I'm like, hmm, you know what? As soon as I put this down here, I'm not going to be able to reach these fan headers. Well, this is why I want these extensions here. I want to use them to route the, the fan headers out from underneath the CPU cooler so that I can actually get a hold of them when uh, I've got the CPU cooler down. And the, the couple other things that you're going to want to look at here too is because there is tight, uh, pretty tight space here, is that if you're going to use, you know, like for say, these four SATA ports right here, you're probably going to want to route those cables as well too in advance. Uh, we're not going to be using these four SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Uh, there's already two on the edge here and we're only going to be using one of them because we're not using an optical drive. So that should be fine for our purposes. But just so you know, uh, with many ITX builds, you have to kind of look at things a little bit ahead, a couple steps so that you're not screwing yourself over once you put the CPU heatsink down. Uh, it would have been a lot easier if we had used the stock Intel one because there's plenty of room to work around it or a low profile one. But we're but be, because we're going for more performance, um, better cooling with the aftermarket uh, be quiet one here, we're gonna wanna think about those things in advance if we are using that. Okay, so you can see that, you know, all three of them are routed. And there's this nice little channel here where we can kind of take them out of the, uh, the danger zone, if you will. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of, to make it easier to work with, um, just to maybe put a zip tie on here. So that they're, they're not getting in your way, you can tuck them aside a little bit easier. Like so, okay. Now it is time to take off the protective film. And we have to make sure that we've got enough room for the cable to come through. Now, because when we mount this, we have to keep in mind airflow. This motherboard is going to sit like this. The fan is going to come from the front and it's going to draw air from the back. So we're going to want the CPU cooler to sit like that so that it can take advantage of the cool air coming in from the front and exhausting it out the back. So that's what we're going to do here. And this is where flipping it upside down might help out a lot because we're going to have to screw this on from the back here. Okay. Okay, so that looks lined up. I'm going to start screwing this down. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a cross pattern, uh, counting out how many times you screw it down. It's not going to be exact, but it'll at least give you more even pressure across all four mounting points. I'm doing a count of four but you can pick any count you want, just as long as it's not all the way down onto the board before you're done. And just try to make sure that you're giving equal contact. And it's important to kind of check your work, so make sure that everything's you're not squeezing a cable. You're not uh, running into a uh, motherboard surface mount component that you might regret destroying. Uh, just as a double check here. Now, since everything looks okay here, we're just gonna give the uh, cooler a little bit of a twist to kind of get that CPU paste um, right in there. And we're gonna continue until this bottoms out. So back to that question someone asked about what's the best way to hold your motherboard when you're doing the CPU cooler ins installation. For this particular uh, CPU cooler, this is the best way because the screws are, mount are, are being screwed down from the bottom. Okay. Here's, here's a couple of trains of thought here. Um, some people think that you need to completely reef this down 
to get the best thermals out of your uh, CPU, uh, while some people think a lighter touch is better. I'm somewhere in between. Basically, I'll screw it all the way down until it's finger tight, and then I'll add maybe another half to a, a quarter turn once I'm done. So as soon as I can't screw it down any more of my fingers, I'll just take my hand and I'll give it one extra quarter turn. And that should allow me enough pressure to take advantage of the cooling properties of the CPU cooler. That should be tight enough. All right, so it looks like nice and tight. Everything looks good here. I've left myself enough slack and a good exit position for the uh, CPU cooler's uh, fan header, which is right down here. The yellow one is the one I want to connect for the CPU cooler, so I'll do that right now. And there we go. So this cable's not in the way. These cables aren't in the way. I can reach the, uh, when I finally install this into the case, um, there's no blockage of the cables down here and I will be able to access my three fan headers right here and connect uh, any number of cooling fans I have in my case. We got CPU cooler installed. We've got CPU fan header installed in the PWM slot. We've got extensions so that we can work easily with the fan headers on this board and that's one of the unique things about this board is that it does have uh, four fan headers, one for the CPU and three for external fans. So this will make it very easy for you to control the fans in here and get optimum performance. So if you want the front fan to run faster than the back fan, etc., uh, you do have a little bit more control with this particular motherboard um, whenever it comes out. And um, just in case you guys didn't see the unboxing video, I did mention another motherboard that they are coming out with, uh, ASUS is coming out with, which is called the ROG Impact. Uh, that particular motherboard is an ROG version of this board. So it'll be red and black. It'll go even better with this red memory and this cooler. So you know, uh, and it'll also be very expensive. I think um, I think what I saw was that it's going to be at least two twenty nine to two hundred fifty dollars. It's it's a very premium board. There's a lot of new features on it. Uh, better audio, better networking, basically a better everything uh, on this board. Now, ASUS has been really well known for this little, very useful piece of equipment. Uh, in fact, they come with three now, uh, called Q-Connectors. So what they do is basically allow you to plug uh, motherboard um, front headers into it before you plug it into the motherboard itself. So they have ones for USB, FireWire when it was still prevalent, and of course, your front panel headers. Um, the Nice thing that, and I think they're thinking the same thing that I'm thinking, is that when you're working with a mini ITX board, those components tend to be hidden really well when you finally enclose your enclosure and you're now trying to hunt for the pin assignments. You're gonna to have to take a flashlight to see which one's which. Well, they've made it easy for you. They've included this thing right here, which I don't think is complete yet. I think this is just a prototype. Hopefully the, the actual one will be braided, but it's basically a Q connector with extensions. So now when you plug this into the board, uh, you'll have access to, access to this at any angle here. And this one will go right over here, I believe. This is the front reset LED. Yep, that's right here. And it's keyed so you can't make a mistake. So once you've got the motherboard in the case and everything, you're trying to connect the front panel headers, well, guess what? They're already extended outwards. You can take your time and then cable manage them out of the way. So that's really cool. So I've got a SATA cable. Now these are really, really nice ones. They came with our um, Z77 Stinger motherboard. Probably one of the best ones I've seen. They are completely enclosed, they're rounded, so that they go around things very easily. Uh, and it's a really smart thing to do with mini ITX boards because those flat cables, they don't move very well. They kind of twist and bind. This has good motion, so you can stick it straight underneath the CPU cooler if you need it, route it around the side here. Um, better for airflow, and we're only gonna need one of these. And of course, they don't label these. 
ports on a early sample because there's no silk screening. Oh no. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out, but I'm going to pick port number one. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's the right one. If not, we'll know pretty soon. All right, so that's done. So our prep for the motherboard is completely done. We know where all the cables are going to come out of, so we can kind of figure out what kind of planning we need to do to get it into the, uh, into the case and everything. Now let's get the, uh, the case all prepped up. Um, one thing that we're going to want to do is mount our mount our um, our SSD. So let's go ahead and do that. Our SSD is going to go on the side here, and you can see there's the I/O uh, panel and all the uh, cables here. We're going to have to figure out a way to get this around to the side. So that's why I kind of wanted to get the SSD in there because we're going to close this before we put get all these cables uh, inserted into the motherboard. At least we hope so. So now we're going to take our ADATA SSD. This is a two and a half inch SSD. I believe this is also the nine millimeter version. Uh, these guys have started coming out with the slightly smaller, shorter uh, seven millimeter versions, but they have been shipping adapters with them so that they can, uh, they can get into the same spaces as nine millimeter ones. ADATA includes a copy of uh, a Cronus True Image HD, and the key is right on the SSD. So if you're wondering where your key is for your ADATA uh, SSD, it's right on your drive. So if you've installed it, flip it over and make sure that you grab the key before you install it. Uh, we won't need that software, so we're just going to throw it in right now. Now this uh, drive also includes um, screws for mounting into a three and a half. Uh, inch uh, drive adapter. So if you're using the conventional um, three and a half inch sleds uh, that don't have the two and a half inch uh, connect, uh, screw holes, then you can use this adapter to mount it in place of that. But right now, modern cases, most modern cases do have that already. So you shouldn't run into a problem. Knowing that the, uh, that the SSD is going to be mounted in the middle, that's where we plan to put it, and knowing that we're going to use the lowest possible point to connect it, uh, we're just going to put it in the middle, and it just makes sense. One thing that you may want, may need to do is you may need to find longer screws. Uh, I believe that they are included with the case, so if these don't work, we're going to fish the longer ones out of the box here. Yep, and it looks like we will need longer ones. So the nice thing about BitPhoenix is that they did consider that, hey, you know what, some people are going to use um, an SSD uh, in these cages that they have on the side here, but because of the design of the cage, you, they're gonna need different screws. So they are included in the box, so let me just go fish those out of the accessory box for the BitPhoenix. Now speaking of BitPhoenix, uh, as far as components in the box go, there really isn't a whole lot of extra stuff besides the manual for this particular case. Um, it's such a simple case that I think that a lot of people with a little bit of planning will be able to build with it because it's not really complicated in any way. It's just a, a very unique form factor. Uh, here they've got, um, I think these are brackets for a slim DVD drive, I think. Um, yeah, I think these are. There's additional thumb screws here for mounting a power supply, I believe. And then, of course, we're looking for the motherboard standoff screws, which are these guys right here. Two, three, four. And we'll want some longer versions of the drive screws, which are these guys here. They're nice and long. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we have enough screws. We have a set of screws for installing the SSD on the door, and we have a set of screws for installing the uh, motherboard and the system onto the standoffs. They're already uh, pre-installed in the case itself. So with the BitPhoenix Prodigy, you don't need to install motherboard standoffs. They're already here. Uh, hmm, these don't look right. Let's try another set. Yeah, that's the other tip I want to pass along. If it just doesn't feel right, don't go all the way in. That can be taken in so many different ways. <laughs> I 
Okay, so we found one that's ones that actually work. Uh, so the ones that work aren't the longer ones. They're the ones that are kind of uh, kind of countersunk. Uh, they're the same ones that it looks like are for the motherboard tray and it looks like they have a bunch of them here so that does the trick. Okay done, done, and two more and we are done. Beautiful. Now, one thing I just noticed on this uh, ADATA SSD is the fact that the warranty void sticker is actually covering one of the screw holes for uh, mounting the uh, SSD on the bottom here. Uh, I'm I'm going to mention it to them and let them know because they probably didn't probably didn't figure out that that was an issue. So uh, I'm going to mention that. So just just one of the funny things you notice when you. Uh, when you start working with different types of hardware. I'm sure they won't void the warranty because they probably look at and, and realize and see that, hey, you know what, that's probably our fault. We put the sticker there. They didn't tamper with it. They, we just put it in the wrong place. So that's the SSD mounted to the side panel. And again, you can install two of them. So if you wanted to install one regular SSD and maybe another hybrid drive on the side for your software, so that would actually totally work. And then that way, that would still keep your system nice and, and light. So since we had the forethought to get everything pre-routed out of here, we should be in good shape for both cable management, fans and also uh, mounting your SSD here because we figured out a way to get this all the way through here. And these are great cables as well too. Okay, there we go. Groovy. So everything's mounted the right way. So should just be able to slide it through because there's no other choice. And it is a very tall cooler, so we might need to maneuver it a certain way. And actually, it looks like what we might have to do is remove the front drive bay to get this in here. Yep, looks like that's what we're gonna have to do. So, uh, lesson learned, if you're going to be installing a really large CPU cooler in the BitPhoenix Prodigy, you're going to need to uninstall the, uh, the optical drive bay completely because it's going to get in the way of you trying to mount it, mount the, uh, the motherboard and all its components up on the uh, motherboard tray there because you can't remove it. You can't remove the, the top here. This isn't in the way, but this is. Uh, one more screw, two more screws on the side here. They're just hiding on the side here. So there's two more, two here, two here. So four more in total. And that should allow this thing to drop right down. Now you should be able to fit an even bigger cooler than this one in this case. Uh, in fact, in our original Prodigy build, we actually did a Noctua NHD14 that, that fit properly uh, once we were able to remove this drive bay cover because you would basically slide it in this way and then move it backwards because this gives a little bit of uh, clearance. And that was the uh, optical bay dropping down, like I said it would, literally. There we go. All right, so now that we've done that, we can pop this back on. And this will be the last time that we need to take this off. And now you can see that you now have clearance to do this. And it just fits, no problem. Look at that, guys.
and boom, she is docked right in. Okay? So now all you need is four motherboard standoff screws, which are included, to secure it. And then you're, you're off to the races here, guys. Now one thing that you're going to need to do is you, with uh, assembling this motherboard uh, into the system is that because some of the long handle screwdrivers are way too long, they tend to screw things in at an angle and you don't want to strip the standoffs, is that you're going to need to pick up a smaller screwdriver to get these in straight. So that's another tip that you're going to need. So if all your screwdrivers in your workshop are all long handle, uh, you're going to need one for this build. Now one little issue that might come up is uh, with the VRM here. It is kind of in the way. Um, so you might want to, you might need to, out of necessity, carefully use the long handle one. Um, but once you get all of the tension off of the other screws, this should drop in. So you might want to start off with the front two screw, get the, the motherboard to kind of sit in place first before you screw in the more difficult ones. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit closer so that everyone can see. So everything here is mounted properly. We've got our cables for um, your front panel header. We've sunk the SATA cable underneath the cooler so that we uh, have better cable management here, our single one. Although if you do uh, uh, more than one, you can actually do that as, with the extra one as well too, or extra ones. Uh, the SATA cable will exit from here and plug directly into the door panel, which is fantastic. We've also got that bundle of cable that we took care of on the side here for your fans. So this fan will be able to plug into here and this fan will be able to plug in here as well too. Uh, we have the capability of adding maybe one more fan at the top here if we want to, depending on how cooling is going. Uh, and that should be it. Uh, this would also allow you to, if you didn't want to do the 230 millimeter fan all by itself, you could mount two 140s on here and take advantage of the third uh, fan header. So maybe run two LED 140s. But we wanted to do the uh, 230 because it, it would basically show up a lot better in front of this mesh fan grill. So that's basically it here. Uh, we're just gonna mount the power supply and get everything routed in here. Now one tip with the power supply is that Jackie from Bit Phoenix did suggest that we should probably, with the help of the modular cables uh, from, from all the components that they're going to power, put them on the components first and then put them into the uh, bottom bay here. And once you do that, you can now have the additional room here to put them into, because once you put this inside, right, you're not going to have any room to work with the cable management. So if you do it this way, it'll be a lot easier for you in the long run. Of course, this is a bit long, so it's going to kind of be sticking out the ass end of the, uh, of the power supply uh, compartment, but we'll figure out a solution for that a little bit later using motherboard standoffs. So let's go ahead and show you how that's done. Because we're running a GTX 770, that means we're going to need a single six pin and a six plus two pin. Um, this particular PSU does have two sixes and two um, six plus twos, but in this case, because it's already one single cable and for cable management purposes, we're just going to run the two six plus two pins. We'll just split off the one extra two if we don't need it and we'll just tie that up a little bit closer up to the uh, top of the uh, cable here. So that should be no problem. And this will allow us to run one fewer cable. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we also are running one SATA device. So we only need one single SATA cable. They do give you the option to have a single uh, single connector on one of their modular cables. So if you don't need that entire chain of stuff, you don't need to use it. Now, there we go. So that's all we really need. So we just need one of these guys here because one single uh, is all we need there. We need uh, the 24 pin, which is already connected. And we need an additional eight pin, I believe here. Yep, 
Uh, so we just need to grab that. And I believe it's on its own single strand here, which is this guy at the bottom of the box. The coolest thing about, yeah, this, this is a fantastic power supply bundle. Basically what they've done is they've given us the option to run single uh, SATA or the tree of four or three. Uh, for the PCI Express, they, they've given us a single chain with both the connectors on board. Uh, it's okay that they're both eights because you just split off the uh, second one and you, you have two sixes now. So if you're running a GTX six, uh, 760 uh, or similar, you'll be able to do that. Or if you're running a more powerful uh, GPU that requires two H, you'll also be able to bring back the additional two and then you're good to go there. And for the CPU, well, we really only need one single connector because there's not two sets of eight or two, uh, one set, one eight and one four or something like that. So we can plug that all in pretty easily and save on cable management room here. So I think we've got everything that we need from the power supply side in terms of uh, cable management and cables. So we can put all the rest of them away. Although it kind of seems like a waste, doesn't it? You have all these cables, you kind of want to use them all, but this is a, f a small form factor build. Uh, airflow is important, so you're going to want to use as few cables as possible, and you're going to want to manage them as best as you can. Okay, so starting with the motherboard, uh, we're going to route this guy down here. So that's already up top here. We can go ahead and go plug that in. like so boom and we'll just set that off to the side or better yet we're going to take advantage of these holes here to kind of pre cable management cable management cable manage things away we're going also going to need to plug this in here so we know that our graphics card is going to end up somewhere over here with the head uh, with the uh with the power connectors over here so we just need to figure out okay well they're gonna come right up and over, and that means I can go down here. And then, you know, I can figure out some way to maybe suspend these above, um, above the card somewhere while not impeding the airflow from the CPU cooler. But I'll just leave them there for now. I also know that I need one SATA connector, and that's gonna be pretty close to the wall here. So wherever this goes, it can go. like so, so we know that we could probably tie this off here later on once we're done, but we'll just pop that straight in here, plunk. And because we know that the front of the power supply is where all of the uh, cables will come out, we want to keep them nice and close to the front so that we have all the room we can to uh, snake them over here. Okay, so that's what we're gonna need for that. Uh, at this point, we should also connect uh, the front panel header will come in here so we can plan to plug that in once we get the door on. All right, so everything's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and plug in the power supply. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, um, this power supply will not fit all the way through, unfortunately. So we're going to have to plug all these in before we uh, push it into the power supply. And that was a pro tip from Jackie from BitPhoenix. He did suggest that um, you plug everything into it before you push it into the case so that you have everything in place before you do what you need to do in terms of cable management. And we need to find a spot for our PCI Express, which is one of these four up here. And maybe plug it into the furthest away one. Uh, we need one SATA connector for the drives, and it's going to be one of these. So we'll plug it into the top one here, and we also need one for the motherboard, 4-pin or 8-pin, and that'll go right there. So that's really all we need for this build, it looks like. And to complete this, we just need to pull the 24 pin through and then connect it to the inside here. Like so. I know this is hard to see, but this is what we're doing.
done. Look at that. Okay, so we've got power, 24 pin, 8 pin. We can snake everything through here, tie everything down. We know this is going to fall out at the end until we figure out our, our uh, workaround for that, for that piece. But everything just looks good. And that's what we looked like um, before getting this plugged in properly uh, with one of our ghetto methods of, uh, of, of getting this put in here before cable management, all right? So we'll figure out a way to get that put in there, but that's basically the idea for now. Again, removing that, that drive bay down here did give us a little bit more room, but what our end goal is, is to basically get these cables back into this little hole right here, and there should be enough room to do that. And now that we've got this all out here and everything, we can go ahead and work on uh, connecting our fans. So we've got a fan back here. that we can connect. And because uh, Be Quiet has given us these awesome uh, zip ties, we're gonna use one of them to work on our cable management. So for now, we're just gonna shove all these cables down in the bottom here. We're gonna bring the SATA cable up here. So remember that door? Well, here it is. And we've got a, our SATA connector right here. That's gonna go straight in. And we've got our, sorry, our SATA power. And then we've got our SATA cable right here. Now, once you do this, keep in mind that when you do pull out the, uh, the side panel, you're gonna to need to be careful because the data cable is a bit short. So if you have a short data cable that you've put in here, make sure that you remember that you should probably be careful when you pull off the side, the side panel if you have a short, if you're using the shorter, shorter SATA cables. So I'm just gonna pop the door on here. Just kind of show you what it looks like. like so. And it will be a bit crowded until we do some proper cable management, but kind of get the idea here. Okay. Okay, so there we are. So the door is on. That means that all we're needing to do now is we just need to work on cable management. We only need to work on the front panel headers, right? Uh, front panel IO headers right here, uh, which are already within reach here. So we'll undo that and uh, I'll just show you just how easy it is to get that going here. So on the BitPhoenix Prodigy, you've got your uh, power reset and your hard drive LED, power LED, and that connects directly to the Q Connect right here. So remember that, that, that little pigtail thing here? That goes directly on here. Everything is already set up. So we just need to basically connect them to the right connectors and then, then we're good to go. And it's almost like Bit Phoenix had something to do with the, the uh, design of this motherboard because everything just kind of, they're the exact right amount of connectors. Although I did hear a story that uh, Bit Phoenix went to their head office to talk to them about something. I don't know what. That's between them and uh, Asus. Okay. And then the other connectors that we're going to want to connect here are, of course, our audio and our USB 3 because the Z87i Deluxe has uh, a total of eight um, USB 3.0 ports and that's something that we definitely want to utilize if we've got them. So USB 3 to the side, boom, right there. Now if they did make a, here, there we go. Done. 
and we'll probably want to tidy this out of the way a little bit later on but that's basically the idea we want to get it out of the way of the fan and we have USB 2.0 which is also connected here it's actually one piece and I believe this is your USB 2.0 header down here we'll be able to see by the notch and it is the right one so we're gonna plug this right here it's right beside the uh, the CMOS battery here that's the second one here and we need audio and this is based on the keying here that is the correct one and we want the HD audio and we'll plug that right in here and to the ALC 1150 chipset that's on this thing here cool so again just a quick close-up this is before cable management this is before getting this power supply to sit properly once we get our ghetto method of uh, installing it all done um, it's looking pretty good actually and now we're going to throw the uh, graphics card in and show you what the finished product looks like our build will have a GTX 770 when it hits Land Coover but this is just for show and this also lets me show off something really cool here which is the uh, this latch right here uh, this is really great because on a lot of small form factor builds the latch is actually on the back side which you can't reach this is this handle right here allows you to easily release the graphics card in case you need to put one in or assemble, or pull one out so that's really great so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in just for show And I'm going to throw one screw down because we don't want to put everything together because we are going to be pulling this graphics card out before Vancouver. This one there, one there. Okay. And then we have our power connectors that go over the top. And there, my friends, is a completely assembled BitPhoenix Prodigy LAN party system based on the Haswell platform. Uh, we've got pretty, pretty awesome components in here, uh, with the exception of the graphics card. We're going to have a GTX 770 in here uh, on that day. It's not here yet. We've used uh, a couple of great Be Quiet components. Their CPU cooler, the Dark, Dark, Dark Rock 2, uh, Pro 2. We've got the, uh, the really awesome Z87i Deluxe ASUS board. We've got some great components from ADATA, including their 256 gigabyte SSD, uh, a 16 gigabyte 2133 megahertz XPG kit. And uh, this thing is pretty much ready to rock and roll. We've even done a little bit of case modding with the uh, front mesh. I wouldn't call it modding really, but it's, I guess anything that's different from stock is modding. So I guess we really did. Uh, we also put the 230 millimeter fan in the front there. So we're pretty much all done here. I'm just gonna put the side panel on or not. Actually, you know what? It looks great this way. Let's just leave it this way. And you're gonna see this at Vancouver 2013. Uh, if I have time, I'll do our next build uh, on live as well too without the echo and with audio uh, and video this time uh, that will be inside a shinobi case and it will actually be using one of the uh, asus uh, asus tough motherboards the new um, i think i've got it down here the new griffin boards so this is going to go into a Sh bit phoenix shinobi be quiet power supply cooler different board 4770k in this one uh, hopefully i get a chance to do a live build of that tomorrow for you guys, uh, earlier in the day, because uh, uh, tomorrow, most of the day, I'll probably be packing for Vancouver and getting the Gamers Lounge ready. So uh, there we are. So